You can't get away that the England World Cup campaign was, was very poor and everyone was disappointed and that's reflected in, the, in the, the people going to the game, in the Norway game, in the stadium being half empty. Um, but then we've got players like Sterling and Sturridge who are doing really well for their clubs. Um, you see bright sparks for England, Barkley waiting in the wings, Luke Shaw, etc. Um, I just hope we build a team now rather than individuals. Do you think that's been the case in the past? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Maybe Hodgson has been cautious in the past because of the players that he's at his disposal. That might have been his argument, that might just be his way he, that he's inclined. But I think when you look at the England squad now, I wouldn't want to play against that. Their forward line. I wouldn't. You look at it, there's pace, there's power, there's goals, there's, there's bravery. De determination, there's guile. So are you generally excited about yeah. the England set up at the moment? You're yeah. No, not England set up. I'm mean, excited about the England front line. Yeah, I look at that front line, that's, I'm looking at who I'd play against. You've got Sturridge up there, Welbeck, um, Rooney, Sterling, Oxlade back in up, Phil Walcott to come back into that, Lalana. These are like all hungry young talents who should flourish, hopefully, within a system. My question then to you is, can they play, and Wayne really said this in one of his interviews, can they play for the national team like they play for the clubs? Because that was a distinct absence of that in Brazil. No, no, I'll ask you the question, who's that down to? Well, I think that must be down to the manager. Because that's what it's been in the past. That's what's been everyone's argument beforehand, the golden generation that everyone kept speaking about. Oh, why, why didn't they succeed? down to us, part, part maybe, but also we wasn't set up maybe the right way. You've got this foundation and a game um, this coming Sunday. Tell us a little bit about it. Um, it's weird how it came about because I was on tour with Manchester United in Australia and I walked down the tunnel to the changing rooms before a training session at the stadium and I saw a guy with a group of, of kids. He walked past and Jimmy Lumsden, one of the coaches under David Moyes was in there and I said, I'm sure I just see Paul McStay outside. He said, uh, yeah, 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 so he's come to watch training. I said, Paul McStay, I loved, I loved it. When I was a kid, I loved him. I thought he was a brilliant player, underrated in England. No one really spoke about him. And I thought, I wish he'd come to England and played and prove people that are, he is a top player. I've always loved him, the maestro, etc. So I chatted to him, I was chatting to the lads, do you, do you know who's outside? You don't realize this is like the governor outside. You need to go and say hello and pay your respects, say hello. So all the young lads and those going, who's that, who's that? So um, that gigs against Scalzi and all them knew it was. So um, then after that, randomly, Soic approached me and just said, do you, do you fancy being a part of their uh, Soic Foundation game? Uh, raises money for, for their, their charity and it will split the proceeds and go to my charity as well. And I said, uh, yeah, but on the condition that you get Paul McStay involved, I want him to be a part of it. And, uh, Luckily, he, he obliged and he brought a, he's got together a Celtics Legends team and I've got together a team of loads of people that I know.